Hi, my name is Nancy Verlage, and I'm a museum educator at Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art, and this is Bridging the Gap. Today, we are looking at Nan June Paik's John Cage Robot 2. Please take a few moments to look at this piece of art, letting your eyes wander, taking it all in from the top to the bottom, left and right. I'll give you a few minutes to do this. You may want to stop the recording to look deeply. So tell me what you see. There's so much going on here and so much to see. Did you recognize television screens piled up one on top of another? Does this sculpture look like anything to you? I noticed that it has a human shape with legs and arms and a head. Did you notice that while you were looking at it? There are a lot of things attached to the wooden boxes which house these screens. Some screens are vertical, up and down, and some are horizontal, side to side. The top screen, that seems to look like a head, is different from the others. It has knobs and buttons on it. Have you ever seen old television sets? Those knobs and buttons were used to change the channel or turn the volume up or down. Technology changes so quickly, and the older pieces of technology, which sometimes are really not that old at all, seem outdated and clunky. This piece of art was created by a man named Nam June Paik. It's called John Cage Robot 2. John Cage was a friend of Nam June Paik. Now, knowing this, and this was made in honor of his friend, do you see any evidence in the piece of art that might be a symbol for his friend? Of something his friend liked? Look closely at the piece of art. Can you tell what some of the things attached to the robot are? They are piano keys. John Cage was a pianist. Look in the basket that the robot is holding. Can you see any familiar items? There are books, cassettes, and mushrooms, and a chessboard at the bottom. Why do you think Nam June Paik included these things in his friend's robot? The TV screens are running when you look at this piece of art in person. Having many screens showing a looped video at different times can be a little overwhelming. Some people find it difficult to look at. Others are mesmerized by it. That is one of the great things about art. It affects different people in different ways. How do you think you would feel if all the screens were on? Oh, and one more thing. There is no sound. The screens are showing video, but no audio. It is silent. This work expresses Cage's view that silence or ambient noise can be as significant as other sounds in a composition. Cage also believed music or sounds do not necessarily have to have meaning in order to create deep pleasure. Cage explained in an interview that the sound experience he prefers is the experience of silence. So, does this piece of art seem quiet to you? Why or why not? In October of 1965, Nam June Paik was supposed to have acquired the first of the new Sony portable video recorders to be shipped to the United States. He made his first recording in the taxi going home and showed it that evening at an artist club. The announcement for the screening declared prophetically, Someday artists will work with capacitors, resistors, and semiconductors as they work today with brushes, violins, and junk. Paik worked with all of these materials. Robots are a theme that continued to interest Paik throughout his career. He enjoyed collecting robots, and the robots he created with TVs became his signature works. Paik, as a true visionary, was probably the first to use the phrase electronic superhighway in connection with telecommunications. Using technology as an artist was certainly gaining steam. Have you ever heard of a beta machine or a telegraph operator? Probably not because they are from old technology and the world moves forward with newer, faster, and friendlier technology. For example, 
Cell phones, the ones you use today, are really a very new invention. The first iPhone came out in 2007. That was only 13 years ago. Before that, people use landline phones. Have you ever seen one of those? Do they seem like really old technology to you? Hmm, I wonder what we will be doing using 20 years from now for technology. What do you think? When new technology comes out, the old technology gets discarded, but so does the ability to use that old technology. A piece of art that uses older technology has many challenges to a museum and for the people who install the art for viewing. This piece of art is one of those that the prep team at the museum, the people who install and handle the art, they have to work very hard to make sure it is exactly how the artist wanted it to look. A back view of the PAKE reveals the network of wires that connect 11 televisions to two DVD players. The placement of the 11 televisions, each which has a specific place and a specific orientation. Some are upright, some are turned to the left or right, and some are upside down. Directions for their placement are written inside the back of each cabinet. Meet Trisha Parker a Crystal Bridges preparator. Trisha has been part of the museum's prep team since the museum was a set of empty galleries. She has helped to uncrate, move, and install hundreds of priceless works of art. It may surprise you that works like this are not simply rolled in from the vault on a large pallet and set into place. When in storage, Pake's robot is housed in some 20 custom-made archival boxes, 11 for the televisions alone. All need unpacking and painstakingly careful setup. The whole installation of John Cage Robot 2 takes a total of three days. There are two sets of DVDs, Trisha explains. One set lives with the sculpture and the other set is kept by the registrars, the people in charge of managing the art collection in the museum. We have spare TVs too, which thankfully we have never had to open. This is one of my favorite pieces in the collection, Trisha has said. But one of the things you learn in doing this work is that some of the greatest things can cause the greatest headaches. It is the nature of using found objects. They're very delicate. Some of the materials may not be in the best condition when they are found, and some are broken on purpose. You have to be very patient. The end result of all this careful preparation is a fascinating, complex, and unique piece of art. I hope you have enjoyed discovering it with me. This has been Bridging the Gap from Crystal Bridges.